from the Tribune News Network. This is Newsbreak. I'm Kirk Smith. Monday's top stories. Tragedy in the middle of the ongoing spread of the coronavirus. A fire in the capital yesterday claiming three lives. Sometime around 5.50 a.m. on Sunday, the fire department received call of a reported building fire, Coco Plum Avenue, off East Street. As a result of this information received, the fire department responded with two fire appliances. Some six minutes later, the first unit arrived on the scene where they met apartment number two, which is a single-story five-room stone structure and gulf with flames. The fire was quickly extinguished, however, the same was destroyed by fire. The bodies of a 43-year-old woman and two children, ages 11 and 7, found in the burned house. Investigations underway to determine the cause. We'll find out tonight the government's plan for handling the current spread of the coronavirus going forward. Prime Minister Minnis is scheduled to deliver a national address. House members were on summer break, but they've been recalled, and a meeting is scheduled for tomorrow. It's believed members will pass legislation extending the virus-related emergency orders scheduled to end August 13th. This is Newsbreak from the Tribune News Network. The latest corona numbers very concerning. 228 cases on Thursday, the most for a single day ever. Another 118 on Friday, most of them in the capital, but cases reported in several islands. There were 120 persons in hospital through Friday, 10 of them in the ICU, and health officials are fearing that due to the Emancipation Day holiday, the numbers could be very high in the days coming. The death toll from the virus continues to go up. Nine more have been confirmed. That takes the total to 304 now, with several others still under investigation. There's another murder for police. A man fatally shot on Odell Corner here in the capital over the weekend. The Defense Force looking out for possible migrants after they found an empty sloop off Golden Key southwest of the capital. They're checking a number of islands in the area. The Olympic Games are over. The Bahamas finishes with two gold medals, good enough for 41st place out of more than 200 countries competing. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper on the streets first thing in the morning. Stay up to date online at Tribune242.com. Now the Tribune's AccuWeather update, a service of insurance management. No systems in the area, partly cloudy, showers are possible, highs in the upper 80s, maybe some low 90s, 88 at Freeport, 90 in the capital, 89 at Matthew Town. No marine advisories, winds generally 10 to 15 knots, the sea is 2 to 4 feet. The next side is a high around 10 this morning, next low about 4 this afternoon. Turning partly cloudy tonight, lows from the upper 70s to low 80s. No systems in the tropics to be concerned about right now. If you need additional weather information, check the Tribune's weather page. For your insurance needs, call Insurance Management. This is the peak of the hurricane season, so Insurance Management urges you to double-check your preparations and ensure that your home and contents coverage is up to date. Call them today. With more than 40 years in business, nobody does it better than Insurance Management. This is Newsbreak from the Tribune News Network. From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis will give notice of his intention to extend the country's state of emergency beyond August 13th, when the House of Assembly reconvenes tomorrow in response to the current resurgence of COVID-19 cases. Dr. Minnis will give a national address tonight at 8 p.m. to inform Bahamians of his administration's plans related to the current COVID-19 emergency orders and the country's future transition to a new legislative approach. The country has been under a state of emergency since March 2020. Government officials have said the discontinuation of COVID-19 emergency powers orders would largely depend on infection rates and the behavior of residents. They had also indicated a few weeks ago the Minnesota administration's intention to let the orders expire this month. However, since then, the nation has seen a sustained uptick of virus-related cases and hospitalizations as well as deaths, with officials attributing the latest spike to the presence of COVID-19 variants and a relaxed adherence to the current health measures. The charred remains of a woman and two children were discovered after a fire at a residence on Coco Plum Road off of East Street was extinguished yesterday. Although police have not officially identified the deceased, relatives told the Tribune that Tamane Parent, 43, Renisha Perriette, 11, and Taylor Lucent, 7, tragically died in that blaze. Director of Fire Services Superintendent Kendrick Morris said while not confirmed, it is believed four people lived in the home that caught fire. One of those individuals managed 
managed to escape the blaze. Investigators are still looking into the cause of that fire. The Consultant Physician Staff Association has again expressed concern over the continued increase in COVID-19 cases that has overwhelmed the nation's healthcare system. This comes after the country recorded 228 new cases of COVID-19 on Thursday, 118 on Friday, and an additional 169 on Sunday. Thursday's figures represented the highest number of cases recorded in the Bahamas in one single day. Nine additional COVID-19 deaths were also reported on Friday. More than 100 people are in hospital hospital with the virus. Despite the significant roles that medical workers play, the CPSA yesterday said physicians are still not being engaged in meaningful dialogue with government officials on the way forward from the pandemic. The physicians are also urging the Bahamian people to keep following the current health measures and warned that fully vaccinated people can still spread the virus. The Royal Bahamas Defense Force is actively searching for possible migrants after an empty sloop was found drifting in waters approximately eight nautical miles off of Goulding Key on Saturday. In a statement, the RBDF said after the agency received initial reports from the U.S. Coast Guard liaison officer that two Haitian sloops had left Haiti. Air and sea assets were immediately deployed to conduct search operations in the areas of the possible routes taken by the sloops. Additional assistance in that search also included aerial reconnaissance by the U.S. Coast Guard fixed-wing aircraft, a drone, and members of the RBDF Commando Squadron Unit, which conducted searches on several key in the Exuma chain. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network.